Hi and a very good morning once again. The first one to wish good morning is Balkis in the chat box. So good morning to Balkis and all of you. And today, as you know, we have taken up a slightly different topic. Every now and then, I sit back like an armchair philosopher and I keep watching the crowd and what people do. And years and years and decades have taught me that every now and then there are these trends, there are these, you know, fads, things in, to use local terminology, uh, they go viral every now and then. Take a simple thing like music. Once upon a time, a Bollywood song would be sung and 50 years later, it would still be playing. Today, a song is made for a Bollywood movie or Sandalwood movie and five weeks later, it is gone. It has disappeared. So this is what I meant by saying that there are trends, there are, you know, all these fads and all these things, uh, you know, issues go viral and all that. One of them, as you're all of you, I'm sure, are very much aware by now is what we call as gas lighting. When I first heard it, I was wondering, I thought it is something to do with housewives who go into the kitchen and light the gas and cook the food and something. So I thought uh, gas lighting should be a good thing. No, you light the gas and you make the food. Anyway, it took me a little time. And then I realized that, no, they are talking about this, you know, fad. Achha, the interesting thing is, although these fads suddenly go viral now and then, they have a history behind it. It's just that they need that spark. This word gaslighting came from a movie which was, I think, about 70 years back. A Hollywood movie by the same name. You can Google it and see. The movie came. It was fairly good in those good old days. And of course, as with time, it passed off. But it highlighted the whole theme behind it was this concept of gaslighting. And years and decades later, somebody picked it up and gave it a label as though, you know, I have invented uh, it and it started spreading. Okay. Before I go deeper into this very, very important topic, let me first clarify that why is this gaslighting as a separate word used other than, let's say, bullying or harassing or putting down. These are supposed to be the same thing, no? Somebody is harassing a person, somebody is suppressing a person, somebody is bullying a person. It should be the same. So why do we need another word called gaslighting and what exactly does it mean? The answer is simple. The purpose of gaslighting or the achievement of gaslighting is to make the victim feel guilty, feel inadequate question her own capabilities, her own actions, and start thinking that I am responsible. The person who's doing the gaslighting, the person who's doing the operation, the shouting or the putting down or torturing or whatever that person is doing, now the onus of that has been transferred to the recipient. That is how gaslighting differs from other means of op operation and aggression and all that, which we see day in and day out. Wherever there are human beings, there is bound to be, you know, that uh, uh, the movement of the thing, the balance goes one way and one person takes domination over the other. It's a very common uh, thing. But here, it's a very unique thing. And why it caught on so much is because people realize that this is what is going on. The intention of the person is not just to take out his or her anger, frustration and this and that, but to ensure that the victim, the recipient of my anger and my shouting is actually made to feel that she is responsible she is the one who has instigated it. And that is how it, you know, differentiates between the usual forms and these, uh, you know, things. Okay. So let's understand the roots. Where and how does it uh, happen? 
obviously there are a lot of people who try to dominate who want to be powerful who want to do whatever they want to uh, do fair enough you will have for example a boss who wants to be very dominant with all his stuff and his team members you will have what we refer to as a head of a family who would like to assert his authority and say that i am the boss and i will be doing this it happens like i said from the workplace to society to neighborhood all the way down to the family now in this there are two things which we need to understand to be able to differentiate the first is if this person is just a short tempered and angry person and he actually feels that i am right so i have the authority i am right i am trying to set right others so i am going to dominate i am going to scold i am going to do all sorts of things to make sure that people listen to me i want compliance i want things to be done only in my way that is one way of putting it these are not gaslighters gaslighters are a little more manipulative gaslighters feel that if i have somebody with me with whom i have a close connection i told you it could be a office employee it could be a family member whatever it is now if i take on the dominating role and if i lose my temper or if i start torturing the other person i become the villain and the other person is a victim so everybody would you know start sympathizing with the victim and they will look down upon me the villain also there is another threat if i keep on suppressing this person one fine day this person may rebel person may say enough is enough now i'm not going to listen to you anymore so get lost if it's an employee he may leave, leave his job and go if it's a family member it can lead to divorce or a grown up child walking out of their parents house or break up of a joint family whatever it is the threat is there no if you are always trying to dominate and if you are trying to ensure that things are done only in your way then you are running that risk that is where gaslighting comes in so what the gaslighter does is batter the self esteem of the victim somehow or the other convince the victim that it is you who is at fault i'll show you a little video in which the husband you know is telling his wife why do you behave in such a way why do you always instigate me that i have to hit you see the irony of that statement you'll see that in a little while anyway the point is that gaslighting can only be done if there is an imbalance in the relationship that's why i always keep telling any close relationship should have what we call as emotional interdependence there should be times when one gets upset and the other you know takes care of the anger there are times when the other person is disturbed and the first person takes over the emotional uh, you know handling of the uh, issue so same way as in a family or in a business organization or in an office people complement each other there will be a finance expert to look after the money matters there will be a technical ex expert to look after the production or quality or whatever right there will be a marketing expert to look after something now same day in a family there may be what we call as the breadwinner so he goes to work he earns the money there's a thing called a homemaker she makes sure that the home is you know kept spick and span clean functional good food is made everything is taken care of there is mothering and there is fathering they complement each other to ensure that children have a holistic uh, growing up so whenever there is a balance in the relationship gaslighting cannot happen but here i want you to note this if you have ever been a victim to gaslighting please note it is only when you allow the other person to dominate over you it is only when you take the submissive role and allow the other person 
Am I on? Okay. I hope all of you can see me. My screen has gone blank for some reason. But if you can see me, I don't need to see myself. Ah, I'll back. That's great Anis for you. She can sit right in seconds. Okay. So, if one person slowly starts taking the passive role, and why does it happen also? I'll tell you. See, the other person is short-tempered. The other person is, uh, you know, aggressive or the other person is dominant. If I also try to behave like that, then it will lead to too much of conflict. I'm a peace-loving person. And fundamentally, I like or I love this person. I want to be in a relationship with that uh, uh, person. So it's OK. Let the other person have a dominating role. I don't have an ego. It's OK with me. We can function. And when the person does that and says that I don't mind taking up the passive role, that is the foundation where gaslighting can possibly start. I'm not saying that every time there is one submissive and one dominating person gaslighting takes place, but that is a precondition for gaslighting. The gaslighter can be functional and successful only if the other person has gone down. So what does the gaslighter do when he realizes that, you know, I have this position of dominance or this position of superiority, he uses one of these four methods. What are these methods? You'll see here just now. Agnes is loading the little slide for you. The first one is outright lying. Shamelessly lying. Even when you know that you'll get caught. Even when the other person points out that, no, this is not true, the person just doesn't care. That is the way. That's the first step. Then manipulation of reality. Ask any neutral person and they will say, this is the reality. But the gaslighter will say, no, I am telling you this is the reality. Manipulating the reality and creating a scenario which doesn't exist. Then scapegoating. You know what is scapegoating, no? Making a scapegoat out of the other person. That means to say, making the other person the accused. You are the one who has done this. You are no good. You are doing this. You are doing that. Start off with uh, scapegoating. And the first, fourth one and the last one is coercing. Coercing is, you know, creating a scenario where the person gets hemmed in. The person realizes that there is no other way for me to go but follow the path which is being told to me by my gaslighter. So these are some of the ways in which there may be others also, of course. But these are the four areas I have identified over years of watching people who have this tendency to become gaslighters. If you come across a person who is using one or more of these techniques, or characteristics, please let that be an alarm bell. Do not say it's okay, he's telling lies, he's like that only. Or it's okay, I know he is manipulating, but what to do, you know, if I just keep pointing it out unnecessarily, it leads to friction. Please don't do that. Because if you do that, you are opening yourself to, you know, becoming a uh, uh, victim. The other thing that a gaslighter does is, <coughs> firstly, withholding some information, some crucial information. And secondly, putting the victim in a spot which she doesn't even realize that she is walking into a trap. You know how animals are trapped by the uh, hunter? The poor animal thinks, oh, there's such a lovely piece of something to eat. There is a passage I can go in and I can eat that. I'm getting this aroma. So the person gets lured into it. So remember that a lot of gaslighters, when they want to make a victim out of somebody, they start being nice. They start being pleasant. And by that, they start pushing. And that pushing slowly converts itself into coercion. That is what 
you know, is the technique or the methodology how these things are, uh, you know, happen. Generally, gaslighters constantly insist that you did something wrong. And you know that old proverb that if a lie is told a hundred times with confidence, it becomes the truth. That is what they are aiming uh, at. And even if you make an attempt to reconciliate, if you say, okay, I will take three steps forward, you take one step forward, we'll meet and we'll have some compromise. They find excuses to avoid that because their intention is to bring the other person to submission. So if that person was genuine and if the person actually felt that I want to do it for good reason, like I told you, some people are very short tempered, very angry uh, people, very dominating people, but their intentions are good. Their method is wrong, but their intention is good. But the gaslighters intention itself is uh, uh, bad. And if you try to tell that, no, why you're doing this? How come you did that and all they come out with labels. You are oversensitive. You are like this, you are like uh, uh, that. You are not doing this uh, correctly. You have this, this, this shortcoming. And almost as though I'm protecting you from those uh, uh, shortcomings. Very subtly, the person in the company of third persons will put down this person and say, she is a little, you know, untidy, it doesn't matter. It will look as though you are trying to protect that person. But the outsider who did not even know or did not think that this person is untidy actually starts believing uh, it. These are the type of techniques which these uh, people you know, uh, use. And of course, as I told you, they, quit, uh, they can very easily twist events. That also I'll show you a little later in a video. How the event is completely twisted off. These are the type of uh, you know, techniques which these people uh, you know, uh, use. So what I've done is I have listed down some of the signs of uh, you know, gaslighting for you to become aware. What are these signs that you are being gaslighted? You are a loved one or whoever uh, it is. These are some of the signs. If you start doubting your feelings and reality, oh, did it really happen? I was so sure that it happened, but now that he is saying this, maybe you know I'm wrong at it, or maybe I'm being too oversensitive. You question your judgment and perceptions. I think I can't take the right decision. I think I'm unnecessarily overreacting to something. So the whole intention is to put you down and make you think bad about yourself. You feel vulnerable. You feel insecure. I'm not capable of doing this. I don't know whether I will survive. I don't know whether I will ever succeed. And that leads to your feeling alone and powerless. I have already always been telling you loneliness is a very big pandemic which has hit mankind. And if you are living with people and still feeling alone and still feeling lonely, it is going to harm you very badly. And that manifests itself in the fact that you are disappointed in yourself. And what have I become? I was so good as a child. I had so much potential. I had such a good upbringing. I had such good opportunities. But I have let myself down and I have let everybody down. Your esteem goes down. You have a sense of impending doom. Nothing will happen. Nothing good will happen. It's only going to get worse and worse. There is no way of escaping from this uh, uh, situation. You spend a lot of time apologizing. Please note, if you are constantly apologizing, every time there is an interaction, you find that you are saying, sorry, I'm sorry, I will not do it again. Yeah, it was stupid for me. That's a very strong indicator. You cannot be wrong all the time. You assume that others are disappointed in you. I mentioned this, that this is, uh, you know, uh, how the gaslighter involves third persons and you actually start thinking that others are also thinking bad about you, whereas either they are not thinking bad or they're not thinking about you at all. But the gaslighter has made you feel that others must be disappointed. Others must be looking down upon me. And 
lastly you struggle to make decisions because you distrust yourself even simple decisions which you are capable of making which you have been doing earlier also you surrender you stop making decisions because you say that i can't trust myself i'll probably you know mess it up so better hand over control to somebody else that is how it goes it's a very sad situation that there is so much of this gaslighting going on but as i told you i reiterate that the victim is at least to some extent responsible for being gaslighted that is what i want you to understand you may or may not be able to control the gaslighters i will give you a, a few tips before i close on how to deal with the gaslighters but remember that you have created that situation and therefore take the responsibility to say that while i have created this negative situation now i will do something about improving on this uh, situation otherwise the scenario can go from bad to worse so what i did was that i requested two of my uh, uh, colleagues vinod and kanaka to do a little bit of a role play to get an idea about how things happen you know this is a between a husband and a, a wife you see how a typical the husband in this case is the gaslighter and how you know he is manipulating his wife he is not just being bad or he is not just suppressing he is making the wife feel guilty and ashamed guilt and shame these are the two vital factors which a person you know uses as tools for gaslighting so here is this little role play between a husband and wife I'm fed up of you. You have no idea how to keep this house properly. Everything is scattered here. Look at this paper. Is it supposed to be here? But you were the one who was reading, and you kept it there. That's exactly my point. Where am I supposed to keep paper? Is there any proper place in this house? I think I am the one who has to organize myself. I was not able to find proper place. I should make sure that everything is in good place so that you know he is not angry and upset. You know, it's been a very long time. Can we go for a vacation? See, it's all because of you. You only you plan, and the last moment you only cancel the vacation. Every time it happened that way. See what happened last time when you planned for it. You only cancelled it. But can you think why we cancelled also? There was a reason. Your mom fell ill, and how can we leave her and go? But who told you to plan the vacation or exactly on those days? It was as if you were waiting for my mother to fall ill so that you can cancel the vacation. You get a reason for that. I think you know I should actually plan properly. Every time I do this mistake, you know I never see things. Simply, whenever they just got holiday, we'll plan. I think you know from now on, I will be little more careful in planning so that you know he does not get hurt. At least we can go for vacation. My, you know, always I plan such non, you know, not good things, and he gets upset with that. You do such stupid things every time that I lose my control, I get irritated, and I'm forced to slap you. I don't know what did I do. Maybe I think it's all my mistake. He's getting angry and he's upset. I think I I do something or the other and he gets upset. He's he's right. He 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 tells me for better only. I don't use and. I am always doing something that makes him angry. He is right, I guess. The fact that domestic violence is a horrible thing. A husband actually raising his hand on his wife. Now he should be labeled as the criminal, as the person who is doing bad, no? 
No. He has actually told her, why do you behave in such a way that you force me to hit you? And she started believing that. Yeah, maybe I instigate him. Maybe I say the wrong things. Maybe I should control myself. So the person gets to be violent also. And at the same time, pass the buck on the victim. These are the type of things that go on. So the last part of it. Let us see what can actually be done in terms of, you know, working out. I have made out about eight or nine very simple points. Tips for responding and taking back control. Please underline that. Take back control. Don't surrender that control to the gaslighter. Make sure it is gaslighting. Identify it and say, yes, this person is not only being bad to me, he or she is also manipulating my emotions, making me feel guilty or making me feel ashamed. Take some space from the situation. You can't think when you are, you know, under the control of the gaslighter. Take space. If it's a possible physical space, if that is not possible, at least emotional space. I need time to sit and think and rationalize, put things in the correct perspective before I start moving on to what I can do. And for that process, collect or, and save evidence. This is what happened on that day. Many days later, when this person says, you hit me, when did I hit you? Don't exaggerate. Don't tell lies. So if you have the evidence and you have saved it and you say, it was on 13th of May. It was at 9 o'clock in the morning when you were getting ready. We were standing here. That is the time when you slapped me. That is how you need to become aware. And then speak up about the behavior. Set boundaries. I understand that you are angry. I understand you are disappointed. You have a right to your emotions. But you do not have a right to be violent. You do not have a right to hit me. You do not have a right to use abusive words against uh, me. Remain confident in your version of events. Please do not let the gaslighter manipulate you into thinking that, yes, I am the one who is the culprit. Focus on self-care. Take care of yourself. Be sure that you are doing the right thing. Do not allow that person to make you into a situation where you stop caring for yourself. Wherever possible, involve others. Get an outside perspective. Neutrally narrate to a trusted person, a friend, a counselor, whoever it may be, that this is what is happening. Am I right in thinking this way? Am I doing the correct thing? If that doesn't work, then seek professional support. And finally, if the gaslighter just continues and continues and continues, think about ending the relationship. Sometimes it's very, very hurtful. It's a very great decision to take. And when I say ending the relationship, I'm not necessarily saying walking off like a child and saying, I won't talk to you the rest of my life. It could be that, okay, up till now we were sharing this, this, this. Now we are not going to do that. I'm going to walk my path and you are going to walk uh, your path. You may even continue living under the same roof with the uh, person. But you say that, yes, we, I am disconnecting from you emotionally and I do not give you the you know, power or authority which you had up till now to be able to manipulate me. It can be done. These are just eight, nine very simple points. You can expand on that. You can think of the current situation. You can talk to us or you can talk to anybody who is an expert and find out where you need help and how you can go about doing it. What I just want to tell you is you need not remain a victim of a gaslighter. However much you have suffered, whatever has been the duration so far, you can bring about a change now. And as you reflect over these factors, I take my one minute break. And Sonal is here to update you on what's going on.
Hello friends. The whole first half an hour was like very overwhelming, right? When you see that you would have heard as a counselor or as a neighbor or as a relative that this has happened, that had happened in my family or in my neighborhood and it just plays on your mind, right? And you want to help such people. You want to do best in your capacity and you don't want to go, you know, too personal also. Isn't that thought coming to you that I wish I can do something for such people who are getting this kind of a treatment or who are being behaved, uh, have been treated like this. For that, I would come back again that Banjara Academy has started the admissions. Quite a few admissions I've already done. If you want to be one of them who want to help them and who are already being counselors and helping them can spread this word that, you know, you can do our diploma in counseling skills and you can help many such people who are going through this difficult time. And when we hear this, what happens to our emotions? How do we manage that also? Equally important, right? So how many within and how many around you? How do you achieve that? How do you work towards that? That is something you will learn in Diploma in Counseling Skills. On 20th, the next Saturday evening, from 4 to 5.30, here at Banjara Academy, in our training house, Ali, Dr. Ali is going to speak about can a non-psychologist become a counsellor? Right? You would want to know. I, I want to help such people. I want to help people around. But I don't have psychology background. What do I do? How do I go about it? Will I be qualified? Is there any something? And sometimes it's like my age is crossed to learn. How would I do it? You can. We have answers for all of that. And Anis is the one who will answer you. She will leave the phone number over here and you can contact her. And there are so many counselors in the chat box. If you know any one of them, you can talk to them as well. Yeah. But the wish that you have that I want to help someone, though I don't have a psychology background, or I have a psychology background, but it's a long time I'm not in touch with any of those aspects or I don't know the practical way of doing it. All such people can come to us and we can help you in turn to help others. That's from me. Hope to see you all soon. And thank you for the lovely comments for our two wonderful actors, Vinod and Kanaka. And Ali is back over here. Yes, I'm sure Vinod and Kanaka will really feel, you know, motivated by all the lovely comments that came in. So I'm going to pass it on to them. Maybe they'll move on to becoming, uh, you know, Bollywood, Sandalwood uh, heroes and heroines or whatever uh, it is. Let us see. What we are interested in is to have an open house and brainstorming as we do every Saturday. Let's start with Asha who says, well, do gaslighters cry to gain attention just to garner strength in front of the heads to say they are innocent? Yes, Asha. That is one of the characteristics I told you, know, how a gaslighter can win over a person by saying, I am trying to be nice to you. I have your welfare in my mind. I love you so much. And the person breaks down and cries and says that, Whatever I'm doing is only for your good. But you are the person who is not allowing me to do it. You are the person who is doing this and uh, that. That's a very common thing. I says that our gaslighters are very restless, that they seem to shuttle everywhere. Sometimes, particularly if the gaslighter is not contented with gaslighting one person or in not getting the required you know uh, 
response from that person, he or she can move on to try out other victims. Namina says, so well role played, brilliant message, made this concept very clear. Thank you so much for role playing so beautifully. Yes, Namina, I'll convey your good wishes to them. I hope we continue to use such techniques to drive home certain very, very relevant points. Okay. Akila is here. She says, can ego or power in hand as they earn money be responsible for gaslighting? It is not responsible for gaslighting, Akila, but that gives the strength to the gaslighter. If, let's say, a wife has been a homemaker and has done a wonderful job of taking care of every member of the family, from the elders to the spouse to the children or whatever it is, has done everything. But the other spouse gets home a salary. And the person says, this is the only thing that is important. You are a nobody. You are just a housewife. Anybody could have done that. A maid servant could have done it. What's so great about it? But I earn so much. I am in such a responsible. And if the victim does not correct him at that point and gives him the impression that, yeah, yeah, you are great. You are earning. You are the one. That can open doors to guess. It can open. I'm not saying every person will do it. Hmm. Spurti says, I feel gaslighting happens in close relatives and it's hard to recognize for the victim. And if others also try to reflect the victims, deny it. Exactly, Spurti. That is another thing that I want you. I'm glad you pointed it out. There are times when a well-intentioned friend or relative tells you that, hey, you seem to be a victim of gaslighting. I think your boss, your spouse, your father, whoever it is, is creating that low self-esteem in you, creating that guilt and shame in you. The victim said, no, he's doing it for my good. I know I am bad, no. In a way, I think what he is doing is to correct me. Now one has to break that vicious cycle. Navina says, very important and thought-provoking tips given to handle gaslighter. Thank you so much, Ali. Yes, Navina, thank you. We keep endeavoring to make it as practical as possible so that people have a takeaway from these sessions. You know, That's our intention. What is the next one? No, I'm not able to see. Anyway, Vinita says, Ali, what about our close relationship? Uh, sometimes I can see that gaslighting happens in front of me, but because of the uh, sensitivity of relationship, it's difficult to say that they are not doing right. Yes, that is what the gaslighters take advantage of, Vinita. And that is where we need to understand every human being has some good qualities and some bad qualities. By pointing out the bad qualities which are hurting me, I'm not putting the other person down. I'm not passing judgment on that person. All I'm saying is, I do not want to be a victim of gaslighting. I have my rights. I want to live up to those rights. Roshan says, observed many gaslighters in my life. Helped them in my best capacity, but sometimes I have suffered in the process. That's a very good point brought out by Roshan, that sometimes, you know, when you try to guide, help, support, and create awareness in a gaslighter, he may turn against you. Because he feels vulnerable that somebody is pointing out my mistake. They don't want that. So be very careful when you are trying to, you know, reform a gaslighter. Spurti says, unknowingly, I feel sometimes we also act as gaslighters to need to be careful. Yes, Spurti. I'm glad that you have that much of self-awareness where you say that, yes, maybe 10%, but I'm doing it. I should not be doing it. Every time you have somebody under your control, it could be a child, for example. You want the best for your child. You want to discipline the child. You want to keep pointing out the mistakes of the child and see to it that improves. But in that process, are you putting down that child and hitting upon her self-esteem or making her feel guilty or ashamed? That is what we should be very, very careful about. Namina says, I think when we have low self-esteem, being hurt time and again, then we easily become the prey. But how does one muster courage to follow the tips? Yes, Namina. The first level is, as you yourself said, you know, build up your self-esteem. 
resolve those hurts which you had time and again go back as far in the past as necessary this happened to me when i was 5 years old this happened to me when i was 15 years uh, old no it's not that it is gone and now i am grown up and now i can handle myself no if it is there it is there and that is what will make you vulnerable if i have a wound which is not healed even if somebody pricks it with a pin i'll start screaming with pain isn't it so even if it's an old wound i need to heal it and thereby build up my self esteem oh welcome shika after long time i'm seeing you shika says when one is a victim of gaslight that individual needs to first start with forgiving themselves very well said shika drop the guilt of being worthless learn to regulate the emotions in a constructive manner and along with guilt i will also add shame shika because guilt sometimes leads to shame what will people say okay small baby steps not to be in a hurry and then meet the gaslighter head on to have an open dialogue not doing blame game or drama just with empathy and compassion because that person has a personality issue the person is not bad yes that's what i said no that every human being has good and bad qualities for some reason he is frustrated he is feeling inadequate he is feeling that things are going out of control and wrongly he thinks that by dominating over somebody getting that person in my control and making that person feel guilty i can get the relief and i can do things this is exactly right that's what shika has pointed out i think we all need to be aware of ah saraf sahab says a gaslighter firstly recognizing your weak point and gives false commitments to acquire his or her immortal aim leads to suffering the victim by the time it's too late to know and to be recognized yes anything no if i have cancer it is 100% curable if i go to the doctor in the first uh, stage and i get the proper treatment but if i neglect 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 and now i'm in the fourth stage if i go to the doctor will he be able to help me so whatever happens in the physical realm the same thing happens at the mental uh, realm please be aware of that that roshan says our oh, rina says how do we avoid people who create such terrible situations in our life firstly by strengthening yourself rina building up your own self esteem and saying that i am a worthy human being even if i have committed mistakes i have a right to commit those mistakes i am not perfect i am not a super human but just because i commit mistakes nobody has a right to put me down and make me feel ashamed or make me feel guilty the other way of protecting is to see how much you can minimize i mentioned that in the last point you remember that can you get away from that relationship if you can get away physically nothing like it but sometimes you can't it may be somebody very close to you so in that case can you get away emotionally it's a slow process it's a difficult process but it can be done these are some of the very important things this time i really got quite a few points i have even jotted them down as they were coming up that you people sometimes you know broaden my horizons by some of the comments and the things that you come out with i am really happy that these sessions are being used by so many of you to think for yourself i think that should be the objective of any training or mentoring or counseling or any word you give it i think if interactions like these make you sit up and think it is not a gurbani which i am just thrusting it down your throat and saying that this is what you have to do there nothing like that it is just that a random thoughts when i told you these are the type of behavior patterns one or two of you very rightly pointed out some more behavior patterns which i had not included in my list so that's how we broaden our uh, horizons even the tips and techniques how to overcome them what i could gather i've written down now you people have also stimulated my mind to think further that's how it should uh, uh, go navina says i think when we love and accept ourselves and forgive uh, ourselves and allow ourselves to make mistakes then only we can deal with the uh, person that's a fact 
we have to tell that's what i mentioned no that we have to you know accept ourselves as is there is tell yourself that i may have many many shortcomings but i also have some capabilities i am a worthy human being Spurti says, just wanted to share. I have seen someone close who are victim of gaslighting. But I feel I'm helpless to those victims because if I interfere, the situation would become uh, worse. Wrote my explain. Yes, Spurti, that's a very sad situation to be in when you come across somebody whom you love, somebody whom you care for, and somebody who you want to uh, help. But you realize that it may only make matters worse because you are the third person. You are not a gaslighter. You are not the victim. So sometimes things can be worse. So whenever you are taking up the cudgels or the you know fight on behalf of a victim of anything, need not be gaslighting only. Please be first aware that would you be in any way making matters worse? If there is a threat for that, then let go. And let go. I don't mean you know cut away completely. Stop your process of trying to improve the situation or cutting down the gaslighting, but giving a lot of emotional support to the victim. Just making the victim know that, yes, I am there for you. I care for you. And most important, I feel you are a good and a worthy human being. That is what counters the you know, brainwashing which has been done by the gaslighter. So if that victim looks up to you, has regard for you, trusts you, at least her mind will start thinking that is it possible that I'm mistaken, that I'm thinking I am the bad one, like you saw in the role play. That victim, in that case, the wife, will, if she has a good friend or a counselor who brings home these points to her and gives her that emotional support, she will actually start at least believing that I am a good person. Roshan says, do relaxation techniques to become strong emotionally? Yes, why not? Mind and body, as you all know very well, are interconnected to each other. Healthy body contributes towards a healthy mind, and a healthy mind contributes towards a healthy body. So exercises, yoga, anything like that, or at a physical level, which suits you, will always be useful. Spurti says, I feel the story of Kerala story revolves around gaslighting also. I haven't seen that movie, Spurti, but possibly, yes, that's also some of the things which are definitely it's happening at an individual level, it's happening at political level, everywhere it is uh, you know, happening. Navina says, how to help a person who is a gaslighter? You remember we had spoken about this earlier also, that be very careful. Because if the person has not come to that level of self-awareness, the simple techniques which I have tried when a person is open to listening is to say, when the person says, let's say like you go back to this role play that we did. And if that husband were to be interacting with me and he would probably say, look at the way my wife behaves. She cannot keep the house properly. She does this, this, this. And you know, the way she instigates me, she purposely made statements which force me to hit her. And this is what she said. She put the blame on me. She doesn't go for that vacation. And she put the blame on my mother by saying mother was not well. That's why we didn't go. Now this person is saying all these irrational things. He's the gaslighter. But as long as he is open to listening to me, he has a certain amount of trust with me, I will first acknowledge. What am I acknowledging? Not his actions, but his feelings, emotions. So I tell him, yes, I can understand how you're suffering. You're so busy outside, you do your work, you have so much responsibility. And yet, you know, if you're not getting that support or love and affection from your own wife, it must be really causing you difficulty. And then I gently tell the guest writer, you are trying out, you have tried out certain techniques. When she irritates you too much, you have actually hit her to make her aware. You have pointed out this, you have done this, you have done that. But have you got results? If the person says, no, I have not had results, then you say, are you open to trying out other methods? If the person says, yes, I'm open to trying out other methods, then you start working. But only if that person 
is willing to change. That is very important, right? Ah, Surekha is here. She says, they say stuff like, you are the one with problem. Exactly. You are the one who is upset. You don't even have a right to be upset, according to the gaslighter. You are the one who is making a big deal out here. What is wrong with you? Excellent statement, Surekha. Very typical of a gaslighter. We need to guard our boundaries, take ownership for our emotions, and put up barriers by taking due actions. Yes, exactly. That is what we have been discussing in this session. And I repeat again what I told you earlier. It is difficult. It is sometimes painful. It is time consuming, but it is not impossible. And also don't expect 100% results. If the situation improves by 10, 20, 30%, so be it. That much relief is there to the victim and that much change is coming in in the gaslighter. So in all areas of human behavior and interpersonal relationships, we need to keep this in account. Okay. Navina says, wow, thank you so much, Ali, for <coughs> awesome guidance for helping a gaslighter. Yes, Navina, this is our humble little contribution. It's not just me alone. All of us in Banjara, this is our intention. This is our mission. This is what, and even this Facebook live session that we have in, on Saturdays, as you know, it's a free session for anybody. There's no vested interest, so we are not trying to sell something to you. We are not charging money. The idea being that let us do our little bit to create a, you know, environment around us, which is good. So everybody stands to benefit, including ourselves, right? Surika says we need to say either you shape up or ship out. Yeah, it's a little tough, but yes, you can even try uh, that. Vinita says thank you, Ali, for the wonderful uh, talks. Roshan says congrats, Kanaka and Vinod for realistic acting. Yes, we were actually joking and saying, is it only acting? That was in a lighter manner, but yes, they rehearsed. They rehearsed quite a bit and then they came out with this. I'm really thankful to them. And that's what I meant by saying that we are a wonderful team. Come down, those of you who don't come here often, please do drop in. You don't have to have an agenda or a specific need. You can just come and spend some time with us. For example, you know, uh, even these uh, FB talks on Saturday, there are some people who come in and sit here in the studio and participate in whatever uh, way. So that's what I feel that can be uh, done. All of us can do the same thing. I'm thankful to you. And uh, Gayatri says, I can't read it. Kathy says, thank you, Ali. Very useful tips. Yes. Thanks to all of you for your patient hearing and more so for the, you know, good contribution that you are giving. Navina says, looking forward to more talks and thought provoking sessions. Ye dil mange more. Yes. And ye dil dena bhi chahta hai more or lena bhi chahta hai more. So we will meet next Saturday at 11 o'clock. And here is Anis putting up the topic for uh, you. The topic is the transition from teenage to adulthood. We talk about from childhood to teenage. What happens when a child becomes an adolescent, when the child is growing up and has come to puberty. But not enough discussion goes on about the changes that take place when the teenager or the adolescent moves into adulthood. So what are the do's and don'ts? What are the ways in which we can help people who are at that stage of their life? And what, how do we need to understand them? Because there could be a lot of generation gap between the older people and these teenagers. That is what we will be uh, discussing on next Saturday. That is the 20th of May at 11 o'clock. See you. Bye-bye. I'm fed up of you. You have no idea how to keep this house properly. Everything is scattered here. Look at this paper. Is it supposed to be here? But you were the one who was reading and you kept taking
Yes. 